All right, I want to talk about derivatives and graphs. All right, um, the basic idea is if you know what the graph of a function looks like, then can you draw a graph of the derivative? Let's, let's see. You know, here's some, um, how about uh, the old y equals x squared, everybody's favorite example. Um, First of all, let's remember what the derivative is supposed to represent. The derivative at any point tells you the slope at that point. And I'm, in fact, you know, if f of x equal x squared, we already know, because we did this last time, f prime of x equals 2x. That was kind of a lengthy uh, computation, but it turned out this was the answer. What that means is the slope, whenever you plug in certain point x, the slope at that point is equal to 2x. So for instance, if you plug in, say, x equal 2, the slope right here will be 4, right? x equal 3, the slope right here will be 6. All right, these are the slopes that I'm drawing. What about back here? x equal negative 1, say, the slope will be 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Back here, negative 2, the slope will be negative 4, right? Each time you multiply the x by 2, you get the slope at that point. These ones are positive. Remember, positive slope means going up as you go to the right. Negative slope means going down as you go to the right. Uh, and, the, you know, the formula seems to uh, be pretty good. What, what's the slope right here? Well, that would be x equals 0. You go 2 times 0, which is 0. Slope is 0. And it looks like slope 0 on the curve, right? Uh, slope 0 means straight up, flat, horizontal. Okay, so these are the slopes on the curve. Um, simple example, right? Uh, let's, let's look at something a little more complicated. Okay, here's a function, f of x. I'm not going to give you an equation for this. This is just uh, some, some curve that I drew. You can still answer some questions about the derivative, though. Here's a question. Um, where is f prime of x equal to 0? I would like to know where are the x values when the derivative is 0. Remember, the derivative is the same as the slope. So really, I'm asking you here, where is the slope zero for this graph and what we just said was slope zero means the uh the thing is straight up horizontal all right i can see two such points they would be here and here right there are two points that i can see where the slope is zero that is the slope of the tangent line to the graph is horizontal okay so the answer when i ask you where is typically i'm looking for x value so my answer is f prime of x equals 0 when, in this example, x equal 2, that's right here, has x value 2. I don't know what the y value is, but I don't care. I'm, uh, I want to just know what the x value is. And x equals 0 right here. There you go. All right. Where is the derivative 0? That's where. Okay. How about this? Where is the derivative positive? Where is the derivative negative? You can answer those questions also. You just have to remember positive derivative means positive slope. Positive slope means it's going up as you go to the right. So you can look throughout this picture here. There are certain regions where the slope is going up as you go to the right. There are certain regions where the slope is going down. Those would be where the slope is positive versus negative. So if I asked you, give intervals where f prime of x is positive, or negative all right so give me an interval where the slope is let's do negative first f prime of x is negative on the interval you got to look here and ask yourself where are the slopes negative that is going down as you go to the right I believe that would be right in the middle there right this region right here the slopes are negative all right these other two regions the slopes are positive it's a positive it's a positive look at those colors anyway this is the negative region tell me the interval all right um as an interval of x values this is the interval from zero to two all right from x equals zero over to x equals two again i'm not talking about the y values here i'm talking about the x values it is negative on the interval from x equals zero to x equal two on the interval, 0 to 2, all right? This is an interval here. This means all x values greater than 0 but less than 2, not including 0 or 2 because um, 0 and 2, it actually equals 0 at those two points, all right? What about uh, positive? 
f prime of x is positive. Would you mind if I write that? f prime of x greater than zero. It's the same as saying positive. On the interval, actually in this case, there's two intervals, right? There's this one over here and this one back here. Um, this one for the x values would be from two all the way out, everything greater than two. That The way we write that is two to infinity. And the other interval is back here, zero and everything less. That would be minus infinity to zero, right? All right, here's another kind of problem. Similar uh, setup, but it's a different, a more complicated question. Um, I'm gonna draw a graph. I want you to draw the derivative. So here is my first, how about that? Can you see that all right? It's a marker. Okay, this is f of x. Your job, sketch the graph of f prime of x. What do you think about that? All right. So this one um, is a little, a little strange, I suppose, but here's how you think of it. First, you should look at this graph and try to identify the points where the derivative is zero. Then try to figure out where is the derivative positive, where is the derivative negative. That's just like we did before. So where is it zero? The derivative equals zero everywhere that the tangent line has a, a flat horizontal slope. That would be here, here, and also in here, there's a point where it becomes flat there, all right? So these are the places where the derivative is zero, all right? Where is it positive? Where is it negative? The derivative is, well, what about in here? Basically, you just have to look from each of these dots to the next one. It's going to be, that's where it's zero. In between the zeros, it's either going to be positive or negative. So along here, it's positive slope, right? Along here, it's negative. Along here, it's positive. Remember, positive means going up as you go to the right. Negative means going down. So this is pretty, no tricks, right? It's just, is it going up or is it going down, all right? Now, actually, you have at this point enough information to draw a pretty decent picture of the derivative. So I'm going to put it right right underneath it's easiest to do it that way so this is going to be a picture of f prime of x all right what does this stuff mean up here well these dots are where the derivative equals zero so the derivative right here is going to be zero right here the derivative is zero right here the derivative is zero right whatever the curve is going to look like the y values which represent the derivative has to be zero here here and here all right Okay, what else does the curve look like? Well, these sort of in-between regions will tell you, you know, between two zeros, this curve, the derivative, it's got to connect these dots somehow, and it's not going to be zero anywhere else in between. So either this curve has to go, you know, it either does that or it does that, right? Because it has to connect these two dots, and it's not supposed to be zero anywhere else because we know it's not zero. You know, these dots are where it's zero, okay? The question is, is it going to be that or is it going to be that? Should I make the y values, um, which represent the derivative, up here or down here? Really what I'm asking is, is the derivative positive, which would, in which case you would draw that one, or is it negative, in which case you would draw that one? Positive meaning up here in the y-axis, positive, negative meaning down here. And the answer is, the derivative is negative here, so it should go down like that. So not this one. Come on now. Yes to this one. So the derivative looks something like that. Okay, what about this part here? Well, I want to know, does it go up there? Meaning, is it in the positive side? Or does it go down here? Meaning, is it on the negative side? Well, is the derivative positive or negative? It's positive. So right here, i got to draw the curve being up here in the positive bit rather than down here. All right, and then again, up here. The derivative is positive, which means from this point and continuing onward, it should be, should it be up here or down here? The answer is up here because the derivative is positive. So I'm going to draw the thing on the positive side. All right. And uh, let's just finish it off here. Over here to the left of this point, should I be drawing something up here positive or down here negative? The answer is positive. So like so. All right. That's how we do it. I want to do two more examples of these graphing the derivative with some more interesting, more weird uh, functions. Here's one. Let's try something like this. This one has a vertical asymptote. That's what's going to make this one exciting. How about that? All right. 
this is my function here. I am going to draw a graph of the derivative. Now, it's a good idea to start off by doing the same thing that we did before, which is mark off the places where the derivative is zero. Here's one, here's another one, and that, that's about it, all right? Something interesting is gonna happen right here. That's the big difference uh, from the examples we were doing before, all right? It turns out a vertical asymptote in the function will always produce a vertical asymptote in the derivative also. So we are going to put a vertical asymptote in the same position, all right? This is always the case. If you ever see vertical asymptotes in the original function, the derivative has vertical asymptote in the same place, okay? And what happens to the graph? Well, as we did before, I'm going to mark these zeros with points on the graph of the derivative. This is the derivative, all right? When the slope is zero up here, that means this curve goes through the x-axis. What can we do back here? Nothing weird is going on. Okay, the asymptote is a little weird, but at least we can, we can draw in the portion of the curve back here. Here the slope is positive, and so we should be going down like that. Uh, and then over here also, the slope is positive, and so this does something like that over here. Okay, it's around the asymptote. That is the new part, you know, the different from the previous examples. Let's look right in here. So this is an asymptote here. That means this curve, it, uh, first of all, it is not going to cross through zero again. That's because this curve here does not have another point where the derivative is zero. So really there's only two choices. Either this one does that or it does that. It has to respect this asymptote. That is, it's not gonna go through the asymptote. It has to go up forever like that or go down forever. The question really should be, is the slope what I'm drawing down here, either this one, positive, because it's up here, or negative. Look up here, is this slope positive or negative? It's going down, so the answer is negative. So when I draw the curve down here, it should be below the x-axis. That means this is the correct picture of the curve. So get that out of there. It's this one. All right? There we go. And what happens over here? Again, you got to look up here. Ask yourself, is this slope here positive or negative? That will tell you if, you, again, there are two alternatives, right? It could do this or it could do that. It has to respect the asymptote. You've got to respect the asymptote. Anyway, uh, is the slope here positive or negative? It's going down, so the slope is negative. So when I draw it down here, it should be on the negative side. So it does indeed look like that. So this was not correct. All right. Asymptotes is not that hard to deal with. If you see an asymptote in the original picture, a vertical asymptote, you put a vertical asymptote in the same spot in the derivative, and then you make everything work out correctly with the slopes. Let's try one more, slightly weirder. All right, this one is quite a bit weirder. We've got a normal looking sort of a piece of a curve over here. Then we have a vertical asymptote. Then we have another more or less nice curve. And then we got some funny business here. We got a jumpity jump right there and also a, a pointy point right there, all right? Some weird things are gonna happen in the derivative, but you gotta just, just keep your wits about you. What you are gonna do down here is draw the slopes, okay? Anyway, let's try and begin with the, the first basic steps like we did in the other examples. Namely, identify where is the derivative zero. It will be here, also here, right? So uh, those are points when, when in my derivative, the curve is going to cross the x-axis. Okay, I also have a vertical asymptote, which like I said before, a vertical asymptote in the original function always produces a vertical asymptote in the derivative in the same location. We can actually draw this part of the picture without much trouble. It's around here and here, some weird stuff is gonna happen, but let's try this first. First of all, it's zero here. The slope right there is negative, so it should do that. The slope here is positive and approaching the asymptote, so I need to go approach the asymptote this way. That's because the slope is positive. All right, here we're approaching the asymptote, but the slope here is negative, so it should come up from below, all right? And then here the slope is positive, at least for a while, until something weird happens here. But in any case, the, uh, the slope is positive, so whatever this does, it should be up here, all right? Now, something weird is going to happen right here. Right at this point, the slope is positive until it gets right there. So I'm gonna just draw it until I'm trying to line this up vertically, right? Right here, see what's weird about this is here, the slope jumps. The slope is positive up until this point, but then right uh, afterwards, the slope is suddenly negative, right? So what you're gonna see in the derivative is a jump. 
the slope was positive uh, as it approached this point, but when you get to that point, suddenly the slope becomes negative. The slope jumps. It does not smoothly go through. You shouldn't make this like do something like that. It doesn't actually go through zero. The slope suddenly changes from being positive to being negative without ever going sort of a smoothly through a zero slope. Anyway, so the slope is up there, then it's down here. Now, check this out. From here to here, something weird is also happening. The slope is negative, of course, because it's going down, but actually this is a straight line segment. That means throughout this whole line segment, the slope is the same. That means down here, you should be drawing a negative value, but it should be the same value from here to here. That means it has to go straight up horizontal. That's because the slope is constant throughout this region in the original picture, which means when you draw the slope, it should look like a constant, which is to say a horizontal line. All right. What happens at the point here? The point, this point looks quite different from this thing, but actually, as far as the derivative is concerned, it's the same sort of a situation. The slope suddenly changes without any uh, rhyme or reason, really. The slope suddenly changes from being this negative number to being this positive slope, all right? So you will see a jump here also. And then this being a straight line again will produce a straight line in the slope like that, okay? So what's the moral of the story? If you see a jump in the original function or a pointy point, not a smooth thing like that, but actually like a, a real sort of pointedy point, either of those, either a jump in the original function or a point in the original function, either of those will produce jumps in the derivative. And you have to just look at this. Um, is it jumping from positive to negative or negative to positive? You can tell by looking at the slopes. Here, the slope is positive. But then right away after the jump, the slope is negative. So this one should jump from up here positive to down here negative. And then at this point, we have the slope being negative and then suddenly positive. That means when I draw the, the derivatives, it's negative and then suddenly jumps up to being positive. That's how we do it.